Welcome back. So let's begin today's meaningful sessions with the keynote address being delivered by Mr. Bharat Shah, the Executive Director of ASK Group. Ladies and gentlemen, as we stand at the cusp of transformation, India's economic landscape presents a fascinating study of resilience, growth, and innovation. The trinity of higher, durable, and qualitative growth forms the bedrock upon which the future of our stock markets rest. But what does this mean for investors, businesses, and the economy at large? As we look ahead, questions loom large. How can investors leverage this trinity of growth to optimize their portfolios? What strategies should be employed to harness the potential of Indian markets for durable and qualitative returns? And crucially, how does India's economic trajectory position it on the global stage? This discussion sits at the heart of our financial ecosystem, and that is where the industry veteran, Mr. Bharat Shah, a luminary in this field will share his insights on navigating the complexities of the stock markets amidst this era of significant economic transformation. On that note, please welcome Mr. Bharat Shah. Mr. Bharat Shah is an executive director at ASK Group and has been associated with them since 2008. He holds a bachelor's degree in commerce from the University of Bombay and a postgraduate diploma in management from the Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta. He is also a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and a member of the Institute of Cost and Works Accountants of India. Having more than three decades of experience in the field of investment management, he has a considerable understanding of global businesses and stock picking is his forte. His investment philosophy emphasizes buying quality businesses, enjoying superior growth, but at reasonable valuations. The keynote address will be moderated by Mr. Kamal Manocha, the founder and CEO of PMS AIF World. Welcome, sirs, and over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Akriti, for this wonderful beginning. Thank you, Bharat Bhai. It is real pleasure to always discuss with you, interact with you. You know, I remember last year when we conversed with you, it was a relatively pessimistic time because year 2022 was a relatively pessimistic year and 2023 has been a very euphoric year. And it is, you know, ironical that, you know, how Indian, how human mind actually works. You know, that time we were talking about recession and all these things and markets have really cheered so well. So I have always been regarding you a lot, Bharat Bhai, for your wisdom, more because, you know, you are like not a fund manager, but somebody who has understood stock market more like a philosophy or, you know, you have a full understanding of how human behavior operates and works. And that is, I think, you know, has given you so much patience and that patience has given you longevity and you have been able to build wealth for your clients. So on, on that note, you know, I want to first uh, uh, ask from you that if one, you know, tries and comprehends last four years of, uh, you know, investors behavior, like at a bottom of 2020, there was nobody who was wanting to invest in small and mid caps. You know, today there's nobody who's wanting to exit out of, you know, small and mid caps. And, you know, if one has to actually understand how right fund management works, you know, one generally takes all decisions, keeping in mind past and present. And that is how maybe at bottom of 2020, we were not buying small and mid caps. And today we are not selling small and mid caps because we are focused on past and present. But, you know, idly speaking in the, in the idealistic world, you know, investing is all about focusing on future and forecasting the future. And that is where maybe somebody who is a budding fund manager or a young fund manager is different from someone like you. And hence this question to you, how does one actually comprehend this entire irrationality of human behavior? And what, what do you kind of, you know, uh, kind of uh, deduce out of this entire thinking? Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Kamal, thank you for the kind words at the beginning. <laughs> uh, Human mind is not altered. 
And even the Homo sapiens have evolved over a few million years. But um, it suffers from the same sense of insecurity of existential dilemmas of day-to-day -day variety. Context may have changed. Earlier, Homo sapiens may have to contend with living on a day-to-day -day basis, whether he'll get the uh, food for that day or not, and you have to hunt and uh, get the food, otherwise you go hungry. Uh, but the sense of insecurity, sense of jealousy, sense of competitive comparison, uh, sense of undue elation when good things happen, uh, disproportionate than what uh, they should be viewed as. Uh, <clears throat> also, greed, uh, which remains uh, forever ingrained, uh, which couples uh, also with fear, which also is a perennial uh, ingrained trait. Therefore, None of the important behavioral traits of the humanity have altered. And therefore, it may be reasonable to expect uh, the markets to reflect the same psychology and the same uh, sentiments uh, that bedevil uh, the individuals. Secondly, intellect is not a substitute for, say, discipline or for temperament. Intellect is also not a substitute for character or wisdom. And therefore, human mind may evolve with uh, growing and rising IQ uh, from time to time. But that doesn't still take away many of the emotional angst and emotional anchorings uh, that are fundamental to the human existence. And because of uh, because of uh, because of these inbuilt, ingrained, evolved uh, traits which have been lying within human mind over uh, thousands and tens of thousands of years. And behaviorally, to expect anything important to change in uh, not just our lifetime, but several lifetimes is an impossibility. And therefore, time to time, uh, individuals get more excited when things are positive. Time to time, individuals gay feel a sense of defeatist mentality when things don't seem to work, when markets at times hurt you or humiliate you uh, by uh, doing things uh, that you thought probably are less likely to occur, and by making you feel, uh, you know, inadequate. All of these uh, are, you know, issues uh, that when you reflect upon it in a, with a little bit of detached mentality, you realize. But at the same time, immediacy of the context and immediacy of the surroundings uh, compel you to do what rationally you may, if you think through and uh, you may not uh, uh, may not do the same thing. Another thing is you may rationally understand the failings and inadequacies, but that still may not be a good enough answer for you to adapt an appropriate behavior, not to suffer from those issues. For example, rationality will tell you that smoking is injurious to your health. And if you are smoking a lot, then you are uh, hurtling towards a, a disaster at some stage. That rationality and understanding still is not good enough for you to, good enough to impede you or to prevent you from that behavior. And therefore, human behavior is a complex kaleidoscope of 
intellect, character, uh, sense of discipline, learned wisdom or otherwise, uh, uh, you know, uh, temperament and many such things. And the difficult part, as I mentioned earlier, is that intellect is not a guarantee of any of the others. While in investing, you need all of them together. And therefore, it is important that we change ourselves rather than expect that markets will do our bidding uh, or markets will alter. Markets were volatile a uh, few hundred years back and yesterday, today and tomorrow and maybe a few hundred years down the line. But um, to expect that markets will alter and you can just let markets adjust to yourself is a mythical idea. All the battles lie within. Markets are what they are. And I always with folded ends lie prostrate before market in a reverential mode. Because even if time to time markets do a lot of unintelligent things and at times downright foolish things. But over long run, more often than not, markets arrive at clinically precise, very sharp uh, reality judgment that you thereafter, once it has been arrived at, you realize the simply the elegant beauty of it, how markets zoom down to the eventual truth. Therefore, these attitudinal issues, emotional makeup, intrinsic character of the human beings uh, played multifold when it is combined together with millions of people clamoring and making noise simultaneously in the marketplace is a reality which will prevail. Markets have no duty to make you uh, comfortable, wealthy or rich or a happy man uh, either necessarily. Therefore, it is our duty to find a way through the traps and the machinations that markets will play out. And through those machinations and booby traps and, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> many complicated, complicated challenges that markets may throw, it is our duty to find our way by remaining calm, by remaining observant, by remaining unegoistic, because ego is mm, uh, very easily crushed by market, and uh, by remaining agile, at the same time holding one's own convictions uh, well, but lightly. Holding convictions uh, too rigidly uh, is an anathema, because there is only so much we know or so, only so much that anyone can expect to know about any particular matter at any point of time, however much you may know, but there is only so much you know. Once we recognize that uh, we have a very significant finite boundary to our own knowledge and our own understanding on any particular issue and issues, I think it makes us a little more adaptive, a little more resilient, a little more observant, of what happens outside us rather than only within us. Therefore, investing is a complicated exercise. There is a duality of externality and the, the other part of the duality is internality. And there is constant uh, fight and uh, you know, contrast and at times harmony, but many times the, the, there is a dissonance between the two. How to listen to the internal voice, which is appropriate, without uh, drowning out external voice, which is important. And simultaneously, how to subjugate external noise, which is not important. And ensuring that internal dissonance is uh, sublimated uh, to the uh, core issues uh, that you need to know and that you grasp, I think is a key battle. And that battle, that seesaw, always uh, continues. How well we allow 
the devil of noise within and outside subjugated and sublimated to the symphony within and uh, signal which you get from outside is the game. Sure, Bharat Bhai. Thank you so much for such an elaborate answer. Uh, so, you know, uh, moving on to the objective part of this discussion, you know, in the first part, you have actually uh, kind of covered your, uh, I would say, more than 40 years of wisdom and kind of put that in nice words. But, you know, actually implementing the investment decision making on daily basis is a very difficult game. You know, when you say all these things and when we hear all these things, it it's, it sounds very simple. But obviously, you know, executing is very difficult because that is where the, the practicality, you know, gets tested. So, you know, we, we also want to understand, uh, you know, from you that now uh, at this juncture where India is already at 3.7 trillion economy and the topic and the title for this event, this summit this year in 2024, we have kept as you know, in next six years, we'll be a six trillion economy or six trillion plus economy because, you know, in this decade from 2024 to 2030, in six years to six trillion is the transfer, is the is the progress that we are all hoping for. And all of us believe that, you know, in India, the, the culture of equity has actually inculcated to an extent that people do not have, I would say, any doubt on this progression. Where we want you to throw your wisdom I... that what is the what is the quantum, you know, because human mind cannot envision the possibility because one is focused more on present and in the past. But when we are forecasting future, you know, based on your 40 years of experience, we want you to tell us the, the, the quantum of, you know, this possible growth and its implication on equity markets, you know, because when you say the growth ahead of us is going to show trinity of higher sustainable and qualitative growth. So what does this convey in terms of, you know, various possibilities of how much wealth can be created sector wise, type of business wise in, in say over next six years? I think uh, we are at a threshold of a profound change in our own lives, right before our own lives. Uh, this has not been an easy achievement. Many years of efforts have gone to bring the country to where it is today and where it is expectantly looking forward to the future. Reforms are never an easy business because by very definition, reforms mean unsettling of a settled uh, status quo is interest in the game. And therefore, uh, how uh, in, uh, reforms typically will mean uh, uh, just one moment, Karma. Uh, reforms, by definition, will mean uh, disturbing status quo and uh, hurting someone's interest. Also, reforms have a peculiar habit of expecting cost first and palpably, while benefits happen only eventually over a period of time with a fair degree of uncertainty of that outcome. And therefore, reforms are never easy to embark upon uh, for uh, politicians and others, even within organizations. Uh, when you know the changes are necessarily in due, but it takes time and it takes a lot of willpower to bring about those changes. I think a lot of important changes have happened in the character of this economy, character of the society. These changes are deep. They are not shallow. These changes, when they are logically interlinked, they become an ecosystem. For example, when you build Aadhaar-based digital verification ecosystem, which allowed you to create digital KYC and identity, which allowed you to build digital pathway in form of bank accounts, and which allowed you to then build 
a UPI ASN uh, is an app which is well beating app for payments. Therefore, many important reforms that have been brought about is a logical synergized ecosystem, whether it in technology, whether in infrastructure, whether in manufacturing, whether in logistics, or in uh, digitization of direct or indirect taxes or with the GST, formalization of the economy, and many other steps that we have taken, and much more I can talk about, but we all know that, uh, is something now culminating to become an ecosystem. When reforms are limited and few and far between, then the outcome and the benefits are limited. At best, confined to arithmetic sum total of those reforms. But when reforms are deep and well strung, synergized together and deep, they build an ecosystem which becomes a force multiplier. And I think from that incremental mentality of society and economy, we are now standing at a vantage point of moving ahead at a compounding pace, the geometrical expansion. And therefore, again, human psychology perceives more easily arithmetic sum totals. While geometric compounding sounds very difficult for the human mind to grasp and accept that same ordinary looking thing, uh, but done for a long period of time, produces an unbelievably extraordinary outcome. It's something that is not easy for human minds to accept. But I think we are at a threshold where the reform tapestry has filled out many of the important strains and parts of the tapestry. Therefore, the shape of the tapestry is now uh, fully visible. But not only shape, but it has acquired intricate design and colors of its own, where the tapestry has now acquired a life of its own. Therefore, I believe not only growth will be high compared to our own history or compared to any meaningful comparable example in the world uh, around, but even more important, the uh, many other aspects which make growth much more value-creating are uh, uh, beginning to get built. Reforms give durability to that growth, Reforms provide greater predictability to the outcomes over a longer period. Reforms bring about a sense of confidence about your destiny. And therefore, it doesn't shake you when in between there is volatility. The volatility is inevitable. That's never going to go away. But it is when the changes are deep, and meaningful and predicated upon each other. And uh, there is a confidence that they will be sustained and that they will not be uh, torn apart or shared apart. Uh, reforms then create predictability, durability, solidity, plus it provides confidence to the participants in the game, whether in the game of running businesses within economy, or policy formulation, or the businesses uh, uh, who have to run the businessmen who have to run their affairs is a part of the microcosm of that economy. And investors who have to watch all these and participate to duly. All of that acquires much more confidence about longer term future rather than undue focus on immediate and short. This is the implication on raising the valuations also, among other things. Uh, why valuations, uh, I believe, uh, have reason to rise for many other factors, such as 
reduce the uh, cost of capital over a period of time, increased uh, voice and participation of local money, which otherwise at one stage was left to the mercy of only the foreigners, and improved quality of earnings, which is witness in the rising uh, well-being return on equity number for Indian uh, businesses, incidentally, which is India is emerged number one in the world last year in terms of average return on equity, which is a very important barometer for value creation. So all of these aspects put together, I think, uh, the rate of growth, the predictability of growth, durability of growth, confidence about the destiny under control, which allows you longevity of participation, and improved quality of growth, which comes uh, from the improved capital efficiency, return on capital employed and return on equity. And finally, all this is cemented when societal confidence is high about its own self and its own uh, place under the sun. Uh, from the way we have emerged out of COVID, and the way we as a society, despite limited resources and many challenges in large population, very successfully have dealt with that unimaginably large challenge. And when you contrast it with very policy level inferior and ethical level wanting responses of the Western world, uh, Europe and America in particular, where they didn't want to share vaccine with the less privileged uh, elements of the, of the world uh, global community, where policy responses were very inferior by mollycoddling the people by throwing money at them rather than bringing important reforms, which is what India did, supply-side reforms, rather than uh, surrendering to the base emotions of throwing money and buying peace of the people. Many of these aspects, uh, the confidence about our own place under the sun, about our own standing vis-a-vis -vis rest of the world, about our own self-belief about where we deserve to be and where we are, these are now kind of combining together to build a crescendo. The first experience that you mentioned is just one of the milestones and a very minor milestone in my opinion. Uh, that is, only if we really remain circumscribed by very immediacy that we will be designed only for six million. I mean, if this economy doesn't become 25 and 30 and 40 and 50 trillion, I think it would be a shame for us. Uh, there are a lot of factors uh, where policy plans, government have done, very important changes and things that we to bring the economy where it is and where it is going to be. But we as societal participants, we as individuals, businessmen, market participants and other observers, they all have a duty to take the game ahead. Because ultimately the game belongs to us. And if we uh, just comment upon it instead of participating it in meaningfully and guiding its destiny, uh, then we would have done disservice to us. So I believe 6 trillion is a very small, insignificant uh, number that we are talking about. Uh, we, have, we have much more in store for us. Sure, Bharat Bhai. I think, you know, my aim of this uh, panel is more or less fulfilled. I wanted to kind of make our audience have this very long-term vision of, you know, very mag massive possibility and that is exactly you know what you have highlighted in the very first uh, you know uh, question we have highlighted the post the the forecasting of future to be a mechanism rather than you know kind of relying on recency bias or present for decision making and then the second part that you have covered is that yes you know future is like optimistic in long term and the possibilities are magnitude Last thing which I want you to cover, Bharat Bhai, you know, is we have only one minute that we have seen that, yes, lately over last two years, the kind of bull run that is currently running is kind of not giving that much significance to private businesses. It is giving more significance to PSUs 
or somehow old economy businesses and i have always heard you saying that quality of management is something you know which gives the confidence for longevity and we're talking about future long term and compounding so is this temporary or you know is really in indian context something different happening and hence private companies are going to face a lot of competition from public companies and hence many fund managers who are ignoring psus are actually kind of you know not going right so we do not have much time i wanted to please keep your answer short whether the rise of psus is a temporary reactionary phenomena my answer is no and a clear no i believe psus have come of age after being in the docks for a long period of time from 2013 till 21 psu is a basket for said a uh, high double digit negative return is a basket so it was a decimation for a length of time since then things have uh, improved in the stock prices but i think changes have been happening in the territory of psus for a longer period of time the effects are more visible there is now greater accountability demanded from psus at the same time they have been given greater autonomy by government there has been also greater vigilance and improved governance of the psus uh, to reduce inefficiencies and leakages and there is clear evidence that that is systematically Uh, being brought about by a variety of changes that is happening. It's a long battle, but very clearly improved governance, reduced inefficiency, reduced leakages, all are uh, beginning to get visible unless you do not want to see. And finally, government itself is a uh, probably one of the largest customers uh, for many of these uh, businesses, and therefore it gives a visibility of the future. Many of the defense spaces are four year, five year, six years of order book, and therefore you have a significant period of future visible. All of these fundamentally would mean uh, that the PSUs of the past and the PSUs of today and tomorrow cannot be compared. Secondly, government itself is viewing. PSUs more now is vehicles of value creation, and not only for themselves but also for the minority shareholders of those uh, entities. When the mindset shifts from selling part and material stakes of the PSUs just to fill out budgetary or revenue or other deficit, rather than creating them as engines of growth and value creation. There is a fundamental change. If you listen to the budget speech and uh, post-budget commentaries from various stakeholders uh, in the uh, policy planning arena, finance minister herself made very pertinent and very appropriately revealing comments about how the whole exercise is viewed. Even prime minister has made. very clear reference to that that how these are viewed as engines of value creation rather than merely convenient tools for meeting temporary gaps in the fiscal or other side i think is a huge staggering mindset change and therefore why individual psu business based on its own capital efficiency character uh, strength of the growth uh, will have its own equation of the value equation and will be created accordingly but in general they suffered from the contempt of neglect by the market is something uh, i don't think is wise because fundamentally the largest uh, shareholder of these businesses has displayed a very clear philosophical and wider uh, view change about how these businesses are being uh, uh, viewed operationally many changes of autonomy accountability governance 
and the business order book, uh, all these issues together with that mindset change makes them very formidable, appropriate uh, basket of names to be considered. Of course, each business on its own merit in its own space compared to a private entity in that space, but the game is open now. Sure, Bharat Bhai. Thank you so much. I'll have to, uh, you know, uh, kind of conclude here because we are running out of time. It has been really pleasure conversing with you. You know, your wise words are always guidance for the future. And uh, it is it is very difficult to actually forecast a very long term future. But when we hear these wise words, it gives us that wisdom. It gives us that possibility of having a very long term horizon. Thank you so much once again. Over to you, Akhil.